Hallo Leute, ich bin der Thomas. Wie geht's? Ja, wir sind wieder da, etwas uh, Duolingo, etwas Deutsch zu lernen uh, mit Duolingo. Hello everybody, this is Thomas speaking. Hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, I'm coming in again for another weekly German practice on Duolingo. I'm also hoping that this um, live stream will will be useful to German speakers who are interested in working on English. So if that describes you, I hope you will give me some feedback about how well you can understand if I'm speaking English clearly. And if you have any questions about English or anything related to the English that comes on in the live stream, I certainly value your feedback on German. And so I'm glad you're here. Ich habe, du hast, er sie ist hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. Repeat. Ich habe, du hast, er sie ist hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. Noch einmal. Ich habe, du hast, er sie ist hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. We're going to go over some uh, German grammar and then we're going to try to tie that in to what we do on Duolingo after. This will be. Let me mention this is the Esperanto Variety Show. And every week, um, and this is the Esperanto Variety Show, where we have new videos every Thursday in Esperanto and about Esperanto. And going into 2019, uh, we've been uh, putting out additional language learning tips and strategies and other information on language learning in general. Because if you're learning Esperanto and want to be the Esperanto best Esperanto speaker you can be, you need to know how to learn a language. Um, yeah, so this what works for learning one language actually works pretty well for learning another. So, uh, yeah, so we do this German live stream every Monday at around this time. Haven't quite settled in whether I'm going to do it at one o'clock, which is the time here in New York State now, or whether we're going to try to do it at noon. It may depend on what lesson requests I'm getting. I'm hoping to find a, a regular time that we can do, keep doing, but it will be around this time of day every Monday. As long as you guys are watching and participating and asking questions, um, I will be happy to do this. All right. So thank you. You might consider subscribing to the Esperanto Variety Show and use the bell icon so you can get notified and not miss anything. All right. Holly. Hallo zusammen. Ja, Holly. Du bist wieder da. Acht Leute schauen, äh, zuschauen. Ja, ich, ich, ich möchte sagen, ich hoffe, dass diese, ähm, sagt man, Aussendungen, äh, diese, diese, äh, Live, äh, diese, diese Livestreams werden nützlich sein für die Menschen, die Englisch lernen und üben will. Und es ist mir wichtig, dass du hier sind, dass du hier bist, ja, <lacht> dass, euch, dass ihr hier seid, äh, um mich zu helfen und die Deutsch Lerner äh, zu ähm, helfen und damit hoffe ich, dass, äh, dass, dass es auch nützlich für, für euch sein. Okay, so this is what I started to do. Um, last week we talked about regular verbs a little bit. Uh, ich glaube, glauben is a regular verb. If you look it up in, in the dictionary, it'll come up as glauben. And uh, Oh, what happened here? Er, sie, es. Okay. So, German has regular verbs and irregular verbs. And the regular verb means you can look up a word in the dictionary, find the word glauben, and then you know how that verb, verb looks when you, when you use a, a subject, when you try to use it in a sentence. And uh, so... We, uh, when I was in German class so many years ago, we had to recite these, and I said like a catechism, right? So it was like being in church on Sunday morning. We'd say these again and again and again as a group. And this is, the regular verbs are fairly easy. Once you have the pattern down, um, it's uh, straightforward. Ich glaube, du glaubst, er, sie, es glaubt, wir glauben, ihr glaubt, sie glauben. Okay, so we talked about that last week already. And then we also talked about sein. Sein means to be, and that's irregular. And so this one, it's uh, actually a very common irregular verb. 
So, ich bin, du bist, er, sie, es ist, wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind. So, sie sind can mean they are, and it can also mean you are, if you're speaking formal. I am, ich bin, du bist, as you are, er, sie, es ist, that's he, she, it is, wir sind, we are, ihr seid, Uh, they are, uh, you are, that's plural, sie sind, they are. All right, so now we come into something new, which is haben, which means to have. And that's another very common verb. And that looks like this. Ich, ich habe, I'm going to write this as lowercase. Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat. Wir haben... Ihr habt, sie haben. All right, and so we would repeat those in our class over and over again till we could repeat them with our, with our eyes closed. Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. Repeat. Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. Noch einmal. Ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. And it's a good idea, um, if you guys are not in front of somebody who, who's listening in on you, uh, to say that right out loud with me when I do that sort of thing. Get your mouth used to saying it. Now here's another question, that uh, another thread that came up. It's been on my mind this week. I've been getting a lot of notifications that people are commenting on this thread. Are German and English really similar? And I had replied um, that yes, they are. Um, I don't know where my answer is, but this is what I said. I thought I was closer to the top. Maybe some. Oh, here we go. I've uh, okay. I've done two German live streams for people learning German on Duolingo. I'm sure I said in both of them that English and German are similar because I say it all the time. With German, you learn a bunch of endings, and that's a little bit what we're doing there, and some grammar points that are different. But so much of German grammar is very easy to understand if you compare it to English. So with that thought in mind, I'm going to also try to keep that in mind as I go through my Duolingo today. Zwei Daumen, zwei Daumen hoch. Dabei hat's noch gar nicht angefangen. Yes, so thank you, Holly. Uh, Holly is suggesting that you click here on the thumb. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. That's uh, kind of you to mention. It was really funny on the Esperanto stream. I just, I don't know what I was thinking, but she said, give everybody, give Thomas the thumb. And I thought she said, give me the finger. So that's going to be me, my, me, my question for the day. How do you say, give somebody the finger? Um, by the way, we do have um, additional live streams planned this week um, around the, it's the same time. On Wednesday, we're going to do the Esperanto live practice um, and uh, question and answer. So, yeah. So if you guys do want to give it a like, appreciate it. Oh, we have a couple comments in Esperanto. Bonan tagon. Guten tag. Mia cara Tommaso. Mein, mein lieber Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, willkommen. Den Stinkefinger zeigen. Wir sagen den Stinkefinger. Reminds me of an English expression, the stink eye, which uh, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I had a guitar player say that to me. I'll, I'll give you the stink eye when it's ready for the song to end. So I just looked for him giving me something that looked like a stink eye. Yeah, stink a finger. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, let's stop talking and start dueling going. All right, any suggestions? I'm going to go to something I haven't done yet. Well, hello again. I um, not sure what happened there. Uh, it looks like the uh, my session ran out of memory or something, and uh, it crashed. Sometimes when that happens, I can just restart it, but for some reason, I was not able to do that. So I thought I would start a new stream here. So here is the uh, end of the chat from the last one. Holly asked, "Why is it over?" Wieso ist es Ist denn schon Schluss? Stromausfall in Rochester? No nope, power is working. Just uh, my session crashed, it looked like. So hopefully we can bring up another session. 
Um, I didn't have any way to cause this to continue. Yeah, hello, gut geschlafen. Ja, sehr gut, danke. Und ich bin frisch und fröhlich und bereit, alles neu zu machen. Ja. <laughs> okay, let's do some more Duolingo. Where is my window with the Duolingo? There it is. Wir brauchen Dusch. Gel und Shampoo. Yeah, and I'm really disappointed because I think um, I came up with several examples of um, sentences with haben. This is a regular verb, right? Ich brauche, du brauchst, er, sie, es braucht, wir brauchen, ihr braucht, sie brauchen. Right, so you, as long as you know that pattern, this is a regular verb, so this is not a problem. We need. Wir brauchen. You need. Du brauchst. Du brauchst. We need shampoo. No, shower gel and shampoo. I'd probably call it body wash. Yeah, body wash is a good word for it. We need body wash and shampoo. I actually learned about body wash in um, Germany in the uh, probably late 80s. Germans are very progressive with that sort of thing. We were still using bars of soap. <laughs> in the backward country where I live. Okay. Uh, dieser Raum ist richtig. Dieser Raum ist richtig. That's a funny sentence. This room is right. I don't even know what that means. I have a feeling a Raum is not really a very common ein word. Partner ist wie ein, Spiegel. ein Partner ist wie ein Spiegel. That seems like it's waiting for a, a partner is like a mirror. A partner is like a mirror. A partner is like a mirror. I'm wondering how a partner is like a mirror. V. Ein Partner ist wie ist wie ein Spiegel. Helps you see what you're like yourself, I guess. Maybe the shiny, easily broken. There we go. If you break a partner, seven years bad luck. I don't know why it says, please wait. Did I lose my connection? Oh. There we go. I was trying to decide how many points to give me. Okay, so here's this other thing of dual language I don't need. German continued. Three watching. All right. So like I've, I've said before on some of these other streams, this is, this is for you um, as much as it is for me. I certainly appreciate your feedback. Um, I actually don't spend a lot of time working on Duolingo during the week, uh, so this is my one chance to come in here and do that, uh, work on a little bit of German, hopefully uh, be able to spend a little more time on it later in the year. So if there's anything you guys want to see or want to do or want to cover, um, let me know. So here the question is, are English and German similar? People say that it is because they're both German Germanic languages. I think it is. I think it is. Yes. All right. But some people have said, no, it's not, because in German you have lots of... Oh, I voted this one down. I wonder why I did. The sentence structure is very similar in both languages, but there are some differences. English speakers generally unfamiliar with the idea of language case are, are generally unfamiliar with the idea of language cases. Yes, that's true. Um, this, I think that's why my German teacher always said, yeah, if you really want to speak German, you have to memorize these cases. But as far as like auxiliary verbs, um, German and English are very similar. In fact, that's part of the reason why haben and sein are so useful. So in addition to saying you that you are something, right? Ich bin Student, ich bin müde, um, right? Instead of saying, in addition to saying you are something or I have something, ich, ich habe viele Freunde, uh, ich habe ein Auto, right? So in addition to saying you have something, the, the verb haben is, is also used as an auxiliary, very much like it is in English, right? So you say, I have seen it. Ich habe es gesehen. So they use just in the same way you use have seen. Ich habe. And then in English, if we say I had seen it, right, before, it's the same thing. You just use the same haben. You'd say, ich habe 
es gesehen means I have seen it. Ich hatte es gesehen means I had seen it. Um, and then also we think about joy to the world, the Lord has come. A lot of these um, a lot of these verbs are familiar to us from old English. That um, anyway, we'll get to that when we see an example of it. All right, let's perfect one. Let's try that. Wie viel siehst du aus wie deiner Frau? Actually, here we go. So I'm going to come over here to my old channel for fun. Because then I can find Mr. Mr. Two String. So, so many years ago when I made up my first YouTube channel, I wanted to... Um, I wanted to simply call it Two String. But I uh, that name was already taken. I don't, don't know why. Hi, it's Tommy Two String. And I like to play guitar on just one Hi, string. Hi, I'm Tommy Two String, and I like to play so guitar on Facebook just one string. Brought to my attention today that, uh, today Pause. Today. Okay, there we go. So here's the question. How much do you look like your wife? There we go. So this was, I, I have to go back and update the channel. Because right now I, I have advertising that I'm doing videos in Esperanto on my old channel. But uh, I very quickly realized I needed a new channel for that. Uh, so I'm going to go back once I get the Esperanto channel established I might go back and do some more musical stuff here I don't know if, I, if I'm still going to do the one string stuff but anyway this is me and my wife uh, notice I said me and my wife um, in formal written English you would say this is my wife and I um, but yeah this is my wife and the, uh, she's the uh, she's the short one I uh, weighed a few pounds more and this is by High Falls in Rochester what if I click? If I click on it, does it show me the picture? I'm not sure how this works on the channel art. But this was a, we had a visitor from France, an uh, Esperanto speaker, came to visit us, and we took her to see High Falls in Rochester. And that's why Rochester is where it is. And because uh, we had the water power and the river for transportation and the Great Lakes and everything. So anyway, so that's how much I look like my own life. Um, Holly was talking about that as well so i may have been quoting holly on that one kalt kalt geworden es ist sehr kalt geworden actually that's just what i was talking about right so um we say it has become very cold right so in english it's not it doesn't we don't it doesn't have anything right this is the the uh auxiliary use of the word have um it has become cold. It tells us that it's happened in the past. And in German, um, German is a Germanic language, just like just like English. So we form the past in a very similar way with a uh, with an auxiliary verb and a past participle. Become here is considered the participle, and geworden is the participle. Um, and we say literally, it is very cold. Become, right? So. Just like joy to the world, the Lord is come. That means that's old English. He has come. That's how we would say it in modern English. Es ist sehr kalt geworden. And we can get into, um, yeah, when you would use S and when, I'm oh, sorry, when you would use ist, when you, when you would use sein and when you would use haben, haben. Okay, I have found out everything. Okay, yeah, so again, ich habe alles erfahren. I have everything found out. Ich habe alles erfahren. Erfahren, I always think of as experience, but I'm sure that's what that meant. Ich habe etwas Neues. Oh yeah, and we have to learn what's the participle. I have learned something. How do you say we have learned something? Wir haben heute etwas. We have learned something today. Wir haben, wir haben heute etwas gelernt, and this is I have, ich habe. Hast du noch geschlafen? Yeah, these, these you have to memorize. Oh, I, I bet you I'm going to get some wrong as we go, but we'll, we'll see how. Yeah, hast du noch geschlafen? Have you slept already? It says, were you still sleeping? That surprises me a little bit. Uh, oh, noch geschlafen. 
Yeah. So still sleeping. Oh, something just went blank on me here. I'm just going to check, make sure my Hangouts is still working. It is good. All right. Er hat, er hat keinen der Hütte gefunden. So he, er hat, what does that mean? He has. Oh, except, all right, so this is, it doesn't actually give us a choice to pick has. So er hat keinen, er hat gefunden, right? So we look at the N for the verb, gefunden. He found, that's simple past. He found keinen der Hütte. None of the hats. None of the hats. He has found none of the hats. Right, so here's a question. I always say, uh, she has found none of the hats. Sie hat keinen der Hutte gefunden. How about um, you plural? You found none of the hats. Sie haben keinen der Hutte gefunden. You have drunk a beer. You drunk. And so the, the drunk part, the participle goes on the end. Du hast. Du. Hast. Hast. And then a beer. Ein Bier. Ein Bier. Getrunken. 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 Oh, she's, oh let's hear her say that again because she sounds drunk when she says it. How do I get her to say it? Oh, I have to click on it to get her to say it again. Here we go. Getrunken. Getrunken. Ooh. They all came. All right. So the joy to the world, the Lord is come. Sie sind. Sie sind. Alle. Alle. Gekommen. Gekommen. Joy to the world. Sie sind alle gekommen. You played. You have played. Ihr. Habt, ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, er, sie, es, ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, wir haben, ihr, there it is, gespielt, that one's easy because it doesn't, doesn't give us any tricky choices, we have read, how do you say we have, ich habe, du hast, er, sie, es, hat, wir, Wir haben. And then the participle goes on the end. We have read the newspapers. The the newspapers. Die Zeitungen. Zeitungen. And then gelesen is gelesen. our gelesen. Lesen means to read. Gelesen is the participle. Ich bin noch nie im Ausland gewesen. Ich bin noch nie im Ausland gewesen. And this is another joy to the world. The Lord is come. Ich bin noch nicht. I am been, right? I have been is really how we would say it. I have, and here's, yep, I have. And the participle will go on the end. So we can skip the, oh, actually, oh, it goes on the end in German, but now we need it next in English is what, we, is what, is what I'm trying to say. It comes back from the end because we're going the other way. I have been, but it's never been, so never needs to come first because it's negating been. I have never been abroad. Abroad is kind of a funny expression. It means in Ausland is the is the area that's not in your the country, your home country. So in German you say I've never been in the foreign in the overseas, right? And just in English we just say abroad. I have never been abroad. We have already walked. Wir haben. Yeah. Oops. Yes. Okay. This is another case where we need Laufen. sind. But that's not right. Wir sind gelaufen. What does that mean? We have walked. Literally, we are walked, but we have walked. But we want to say we have already walked. Wir sind schon or wir sind bereits gelaufen. Die Männer haben gesprochen. Die Männer haben uh, gesprochen. Die Männer, the men, haben, have, 
gesprochen, spoken, again, just like English. And we haven't, maybe we have, if you guys have seen the simple past for haben, we could just make that, if we want to say the man, the men had spoken, we could change that, die Männer hatten gesprochen. Warum hast du geschlafen? Ja, ich habe doch nicht geschlafen. Ich bin doch nicht, ich habe doch nicht geschlafen. Mein Tablett war ähm, in, in einer Panne. Es war es. Ja, der Strom ist gut. Ich bin noch nicht geschlafen. Ja, so here's the question. Warum hast du geschlafen? Why have you slept? Why have you slept? Interesting. I can't imagine why you would say that in English. Why did you sleep, maybe? That would be a simple... I, yeah, for the life of me, I can't imagine why you would say that in Wir English. Haben jede Nacht gespielt. Wir haben jede Nacht gespielt. We, wir haben. And this doesn't give us have as a choice, so we probably want a simple past, or trying to get us to do that. So we played jede Nacht, every night. And so haben gespielt, that's our verb, in this case, played. Duolingo, for whatever reason, wants it to be simple past. All right. So, oh, hello, everybody. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up at this time. I think uh, my opening up Google Maps used up too much memory on my little device here and caused my live stream to stra uh, crash. But if you guys can still see what I'm seeing here, uh, just real quick, um, I'm just going to say this is Rochester. Down here at the bottom is High Falls. Up a little ways is Lower Falls. Um, I actually have a, a series of videos on my channel about that. Oh, and I know, you know what? I haven't clicked the share the screen yet. So you guys can't see what I'm trying to show you. I was saying down here, just north of downtown is High Falls. And then a little further north from there is Lower Falls. It's actually not a, not a bad walk to walk the whole way, to walk this way. The last little bit is on uh, down St. Paul, which is not the most beautiful neighborhood. It's kind of an industrial area. But anyway, if you're ever in Rochester looking for something to do, yeah, it's a nice place to go. All right, so let's do this again in a week. Apologize for the technical difficulties. And uh, if you're interested in Esperanto, I will see you guys at uh, this time on Wednesday. Bis bald.